Greetings and welcome to DevLook at Steam Controller. Today we have a special hardware edition where I will talk about my experience with the Steam Controller, which I received a bit more than two weeks ago and um, I've been playing more or less every day with it. Um, so I think I'm now at the point where I can actually give you some useful feedback and my opinion on it. You know, I mean, uh, hardware is not as easy to review as the games are. So it's a bit trickier, but uh, let's give it a shot. If you are not interested in watching the whole video and want to just want to know, you know, if it's, it's worth it. So I would say um, if you want uh, something that will replace your uh, mouse in your casual playtime uh, from your couch, then Steam Controller is definitely a pretty cool thing. Uh, I mean, it's you know, it's not really expensive and it does the job pretty well, although there are a couple of issues with it, but I will talk about them a bit later on. Um, so let's um, start with um, talking about what it is. So if you don't know, the Steam Controller is the gamepad from Valve. And as you can see here, I'm navigating the uh, Steam with my controller right now. So we will go into the test uh, and go here, support, I think, yep. So here we can see the controller on the screen and I can show you what exactly does it have on it and how exactly does it work. So as you can see, the controller features uh, four uh, normal buttons. So this is A, X, Y, B. I am not sure why they don't stop lighting up because I did release them. And this is actually one of the major problems uh, I have with the Steam Controller software. It is quite raw and to be honest, feels like it's still in beta. So let's continue. In addition to those four buttons, you have the uh, sort of start and select buttons, which again, won't lie down. Let's maybe go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a problem here. You cannot really go back with the controller here. So you actually have to, uh, you cannot press. Oh, okay. Now they actually fixed the back button before it didn't work. So I actually had to press this back button. Okay, let's go back and click support here. And it's now it's all okay, there we go. All right. So in addition to those four buttons and uh, select and start buttons, which is or back and forward, I don't know how we call them. Uh, you have the middle button, which is the steam controller button, uh, which is this one. Again, it won't lie down. I'm not sure maybe that's because I'm in beta and they mess something up. But this is see, this seems to be a pretty common occurrence, actually. All right. So in addition to those regular buttons, you have the left stick, which is used to move things, you know, it's an analog stick that you would expect from any controller these days. You have left bumper and right bumper, uh, left trigger and right trigger, uh, which in addition to being uh, analog triggers, as you can see here that they can detect the amount of pressure I put on them, they have a second stage. So I can actually hit it and then it will get pressed. And again, it does not lights down. So you can actually release it. Um, you can do interesting things with this kind of uh, triggering, um, but we will talk about it a bit later. And now we come to interesting parts about them, uh, about the controller itself. So first of all, it has two uh, additional triggers. So I'm not even sure how to call them correctly, but basically those are the left one and the right one that you, you um, rest your uh, fingers on, you know, so the, you use your index and middle fingers for uh, uh, triggers and for bumpers. And then uh, the rest two fingers rest on those uh, bottom triggers. And that actually feels very, very comfortable. And uh, this is something that I, you know, when I return to play with an Xbox 360 controller, because uh, in some places it still works better, but we'll talk about that a bit later. I'm finding myself, you know, trying to press those triggers uh, on 360 pad, which doesn't have them. So they are really, really cool thing. And I think actually the um, Xbox uh, 360 Elite controller added them. Okay, let's do that again and support. There we go. All right. And then uh, you see those two large discs. So those are actually touchpads. Uh, they behave as the touch pads on your um, laptops or, you know, notebook, whatever you have there, exactly the same way. Uh, except you, I mean, not except, I mean, that's exactly, actually exactly the same way. So you can uh, move your finger around, which will, you know, show you the point where it uh, touches and then you can press it. 
pressing it will trigger a button press and you know you get a nice click feedback from uh, hitting it. Um, left uh, pad is uh, marked as a um, arrow, so like you know arrow buttons up, down, left, right, which kind of makes it easier to mark the buttons there or arrows, whatever you prefer. Although the D-pad does not work very well with it, but it is easier to you know just using your fingers to find these four buttons that you can mark up here. Uh, right pad is assumed to be used as a camera or mouse and it works pretty well to be honest. Um, in addition to those you have uh, the thing that doesn't work in this uh, test environment you can see it right here this is the gyro. You can map the gyro to a variety of things including the mouse which works surprisingly well. Okay so this was the short overview of what exactly the Steam controller is and now let's talk about how exactly it works. Okay so let me uh, jump into my library and we're gonna have a look at what I recently played. So um, not exactly played, there's a lot of stuff that I activated as well. Um, so the first complaint I have about it is that uh, you, you notice that I'm playing right now in a Steam big picture mode. Um, the major problem with the Steam controller is that you cannot use it outside of the Steam big picture mode at all. So the only way it will work is with the default keyboard and mouse preset, which it doesn't work in like 99% of time. <laughs> so this is like the worst, the worst part about it. Basically, if you're not running big picture mode, uh, you cannot do anything with this controller. And I really wish Steam like Valve would release uh, some sort of a software that would be running outside of Steam on a system level, like a, you know, a proper driver that would allow me to remap stuff everywhere uh, without any problems to have like profiles and everything. But I, I mean, I just hope they will do this, you know, because running everything through big picture mode is a pain in ass. Uh, because it doesn't work very well with keyboard and mouse, surprisingly enough. So I, I'm like, I usually play with the controller in most of games now, but sometimes I, you know, I have to switch to chat and I prefer to just reach my keyboard and put it on my lap and then type whatever I need to type. And big picture mode works with keyboard like crap. So yeah, uh, that's like major gripe with this stuff. Another problem uh, is that, again, if you are not running through big picture, uh, even if it's not a Steam game, you won't be able to customize. So for example, I have a Witcher 3, which I purchased through GOG. So to use it with a Steam controller, I had to add it as a Steam shortcut and run it through Steam. So now I actually executed it and uh, I'm not sure why Steam takes so long, but it actually takes um, some time to launch it uh, as a non-Steam game, while opposed to being run from, you know, the shortcut or GOG client, which takes like seconds. But yeah, let's jump right into Witcher and uh, I will show you the customization. And I also will show you one of the uh, largest problems the controller currently have with uh, most of the games. So I wouldn't say all of them because some of the games actually work pretty well with it. But it is a problem for most of the games. So as you can see here, uh, yeah, it will show you the notification. We can skip all this stuff. So we have a Witcher here. And uh, the thing is, so I can now press the Steam button on it and I will get my configure controller uh, thing. So this menu is what you will be spending your first 10 minutes, I guess, uh, in every game. Uh, I guess before the community catches up because you because you have this uh, browse community templates thing and uh, There are three default templates that come with the controller So you have the gamepad with high precision camera aim Which means that everything aside from the right pad works as a gamepad and right pad works as a mouse And this is a huge problem for 90% of game Then you have the gamepad simulation which basically mimics the gamepad one-to-one -one and maps everything to X input and you have a keyboard and mouse, uh, which maps WSD and uh, stuff like this, which most of the time, as I already mentioned, is quite useless, actually. Mm -hmm. Then you have community templates, which are published by the community. And, you know, you can publish something like this. Personal, which is yours, which you can store. And I think they will be sent to cloud. And you have recommended, which are recommended by developer and can be created by developer, which is pretty cool. For example, the... Um, 
what was the name of it? The the building game with the cities. Uh, okay, we'll come back to it later. So some games already have those developer templates, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I here have the high precision uh, mapping. So as you can see, everything is mapped to controller, uh, and I have the mouse with the right stick click as my uh, view. And then I have the bumpers mapped to right and left mouse buttons. Um, I don't remember why I did that. Uh, I think because of the some on-screen stuff that I wanted to point at. But let's go into the game. So we'll, we'll just jump in. And uh, the thing is that uh, this layout of the game controller drives Witcher crazy. So not only it drops frames like I don't even know what to compare it to. So you just try to move your um, camera and the frame rate starts dropping like just really bad. And uh, I think this is because actually the Witcher is not handling very good those immediate switches between the controller input, which I use for moving around and then the mouse input, which is used for the camera. Because you know, Witcher assumes that, okay, either you use controller and then uh, you move around and you use the stick for uh, view uh, for camera movement or you use the mouse for camera and then you use keyboard for everything else and uh, When you try to move with a stick and then control the camera with the mouse it tries to switch the buttons So I mean you, as you can see the the prompts right now are uh, controller based, right? So um, if I stop here for a second and move my camera you can see the prompt switching to the mouse because the camera is mapped to the mouse so if I try to do both at the same time, you will see the frame rate sink. And you know, this is um, this is actually not that bad yet because I'm like in a, in, a, in a sewers right now. But outside it was just terrible. And again, if I stop and move the camera, it works perfectly well. If I do this together, you can see the frame rate sinking. <laughs> and the thing is that I, I caused the game to crash one time. So I was just like playing normally and then I like, okay, I was running and um, okay, I can run here and then I changed the camera and then I was, I think it was fighting someone and it just crashed. So the game couldn't handle that. Um, as you can see, I can then switch to my mouse and now I can easily use my triggers to, you know, do whatever manipulations I usually would do. As you can see, I can easily drag stuff around and it's pretty precise. So I, I, I won't complain about the precision of the mouse uh, you have this nice uh, flick uh, or like the inertia that you can enable or disable. So basically, as you can see here, I'm actually moving my finger just barely and then flicking it like, you know, like you would flick um, a coin, I guess. And then it just keeps keeps the motion. So you can, you can just flick your mouse aside from one corner to another and then stop it where you want. That works pretty well. And I mean, uh, after some um, like experimenting with it, I guess, and exercising, I got used to it and I'm now very, very comfortable with it and it feels pretty nice. I mean, you know, it's not as good as a mouse, but since it allows me to sit on my, um, sit on my couch and play games like Witcher without too many problems, you know, and do all this crafting and everything and uh, with the precision of the mouse, so, you know, I don't need to be fast here. So I'm absolutely fine with it. That actually works perfectly well. Um, I remember the name of the game, it was City Skylines, and I managed to play it with the controller as well, with um, the developer's suggested recommended thingy is not very good, in my opinion, but there are some community-based uh, templates that are really, really well, like work really well from the couch. Uh, but yeah, so uh, how can you solve the issue with a game that is, you know, not working? I mean, the Witcher is actually not the worst case. So here you can actually map the, you, you know, you can use the uh, mouse for camera and then gamepad for walking, which works, but makes the game freak out. Uh, so how you, can you solve this? Well, one thing is that you can go back to the controller configuration and then you can say, okay, let's switch to the keyboard and mouse. Um, now I will show you why this template is a horrible idea. So you can use, you can see, you know, WSD. So now it doesn't uh, switches the input. So because now it's uh, completely keyboard and mouse. So no more frame drops, no more lags, and I hope no more crashes. But now I have prompts that are pointing to keyboards, uh, like keyboard buttons, and I have no idea what are what. So I have to actually learn that. 
Um, default template is also works bad because you usually don't know what buttons map to what, and uh, this the default one is you know kind of made for first person shooters. So you generally have to go in and then remap everything. So we have like left shift, space bar, X, R, F for items. And then, uh, okay, start is escape. Uh, yeah, we have this thingy. Uh, actually works surprisingly well um, with, I just drank something. I think I was the wrong button. Yeah, okay, because I have a reload now or R for right bumper. So basically, if you want to play with a purely keyboard, you will have to mess with it. Um, but as, as I said, The Witcher is not, you know, the edge case, so it works pretty well. Um, the problem is that many games don't allow for two inputs at the same time. Like if we, okay, let's exit the game and then I will show you the Metal Gear Solid, for example. Uh, let's jump into it. Let's see. Okay, I will just cut here once the game launches because you want to see the, how I search for it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Um, this is my Metal Gear Solid save game that I've been, you know, playing for quite some time. I already have uh, unlocked Pride and stuff like this. Um, and I'm right now I'm using the gamepad, uh, like complete gamepad preset. Uh, for one simple reason, uh, Metal Gear Solid does not understand simultaneous input from gamepad and keyboard and mouse. So it's either gamepad or keyboard and mouse. And here comes like the first uh, major problem that I have with the Steam controller in terms of replacing your average controller. If you just want to plug it in and play a third person uh, action game, you will have a problem with the camera because um, using... So basically what it does is it maps the motions of the, um, the trackpad to the gamepad uh, in the same way that you would expect the right stick to behave. So if, if I want to rotate the camera to the right, I cannot just, you know, put my finger to the right and that's it. I have to actually put the finger in the middle and then move it to the right as if I move the stick like this, you know. And I mean, it's kind of working, but it is not as precise as you would um, get it with um, with the mouse because the mouse input is way more immediate and, and allows you for, you know, way, way easier aiming. And this is, you know, you have this sort of uh, gamepad velocity and some inertia and uh, stuff like this and it doesn't really work well with the um, uh, with the pad. So let's try to switch uh, to the. I will just demonstrate you. So if we switch to this high precision preset, um, as you can see, I can still move. You know, this is my controller working. I can still put my gun out. But if I try to move the right stick, nothing happens because it doesn't understand the mouse input at the same time. But if we go to the controller and then switch it into the uh, keyboard. So you can see now that I can perfectly well do everything and actually the camera controls way better. Uh, again, the default preset won't work for uh, Metal Gear, but the cool part is that there is this community section that is, for example, for Metal Gear has a whole bunch of um, presets already and you know, you can probably find a lot of things here. Um, and uh, the interesting part is that it actually tells you how many users are using it, so you can you know pick one from the most uh, popular ones. What I think would be cool here is to show the miniatures uh, maybe on the right side. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm playing on a huge screen. There's a whole lot of place in here, and <laughs> Valve is usually not using even half of it. I have like huge text on half my screen, but I don't know what the layer is. So. Improve precision on right trackpad. Okay, let's see. So, okay, they how did they improve it exactly? Mm, wide curve, right joystick, and then they have advanced. So I guess they tweaked advanced settings. I mean, let's try it. I don't know. So this is now a gamepad, right? Yep. And I don't know. I mean, okay, it's kind of better, but I wouldn't say it's improved. <laughs> Like, you know, a lot, by a lot. I think they, okay, let's see what do we have here. Plug and bake on top of the individual keyboard setup, this adds back, blah, blah, blah. Binding with precision. So let's let's try that one. So is this, no, wait, did I pick the same one again? Uh, fine, yeah, this one. Okay, so now we have WSD and the mouse. So, yeah. Yeah, as you can see, so now, you know, this is probably what the most of the community gonna play. And this is actually a really good preset because it already has the uh, aiming, it has the shooting, it has everything bound to whatever uh, 
you might need. And then it has the arrows bound to um, what you might want. Although I don't know how you switch the suppressor and light, for example. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you know, the, the community presets are pretty fun. Obviously, you will have to learn them, but that still works pretty well. Um, I guess maybe it's a good time to talk about controller customization and what you can actually do it. Or, um, which one? No, okay, this is the... How do I pick it up now? Um, something like this? Nope, this is... Nope. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right, uh, so let's talk about uh, how exactly do you customize it. Let's lie down so that no one kills us. And I mean, maybe let me show how exactly... How precise I can be with this, you know, uh, because this is um, obviously interesting for people. So. Here I am aiming on this uh, red thing there, and there you go, I'm on here. You know, I, mean, I think this is enough speed for couch gaming to uh, quickly aim. And you know, you can still flick the camera around to really quickly pan from one point to another, um, which should be fine for pretty much anyone. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a ma uh, the zoom wheel bindings anywhere. I assume, no, no, okay, this is marker, okay, whatever. So let's talk about the controller customization uh, on its own, which is actually very extensive and I would say the main uh, like cool thing about this controller. So all of these things, all of the things you can see on the screen, you can actually bind to uh, pretty much anything. So let's start with the buttons. Um, again, you can uh, change the way that the input works. I mean, there are just four buttons, but for some reason you can bind them to the mouse. That's actually very interesting. I'm not even sure how that will work. We can say it's a button pad or you can say it's a direction pad, you know? So if it's a button pad, you can uh, enable turbo modes for stuff which can be useful in some games. Uh, you can enable or disable haptic feedback, which is actually pretty interesting. You know, the if I would compare the haptic feedback uh, that this controller has, it's something akin to the stuff that you have on the Android phones, like the new ones that feels very, very, um, I mean, haptic, I would say, yeah. So it's, it's pretty interesting. And uh, if, you know, for buttons, it's maybe not something that is required, but for those touch pads, it actually helps a lot. So when you want to rebind the key, you just select it, you can give it a name, uh, and then you can pick one or multiple keys. So you can press Y button, to toggle multi-button and then you can press uh, whatever, you know, you want to click. So it can, can be, I mean, it's kind of, you know, um, it, it's, I mean, I wouldn't call it a macro, although it would be actually pretty cool to see it extended to allow to do like several successive button presses as if it was a macro. And then again, you can bind it to the controller. Um, the, another very valve thing is that this UI does not allow you to use the controller uh, pads to navigate here with the mouse. So you have to actually press the stick and then wait until it scrolls to the needed position, which is in my opinion, ridiculous. Okay, so this is like the very basic bindings and they work everywhere. So the same goes for the stick. Again, you can change the mo uh, mode of it. So you can actually change it to joystick. You can change it to mouse. You can change it to whatever the mode you can imagine. You can even touch pain. You are not even sure what the hell is that. This is. This is something new from the beta. I'm not sure what, what it does. Uh, yeah, so for the uh, touchpads, you can assign click action, uh, which is uh, basically what will happen when you click on it. And uh, there's as well, the um, uh, thing is that you can uh, say that, uh, I think it was in advanced settings. There's actually a lot of advanced settings. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can say that, wait, was it? Oh no, okay, that was that the, the touchpad, yeah, there we go. So um, you can say that you can either just tap on it, which means that you know it doesn't require a click, so you just tap on the direction and then it works. That works really well for the directional pad, for example. You know, if you like go up, down, left, right, if you just tap on them and you have a haptic feedback that is uh, kind of good, it works pretty well. Uh, but if you want like the directional buttons, like this one, for example, one, two, three, four, five, so equipment, then you want a click usually. So it's a bit interesting. Um, this one doesn't have any mode shifting. Again, advanced settings are pretty crazy. So you can have like, you know, you have the analog emulation pulses and the outer ring binding. So you can even go like crazy stuff, like bind different stuff for outer rings. So if you 
for example, yeah, there's the, the example up top. So for example, if you move it closer to the outer ring, it will change from run to sprint or whatever you can, you know, bind there. So it's, it's really flexible. Um, then, you know, the, okay, this is just the boring buttons. Uh, we come to the interesting part, the triggers. So triggers, as I already said, they have uh, two states, the soft pull and full pull. So soft pull is what I showed you when it measured the, you know, the strings of my press. And then once you go to the full, you can click it and it will trigger like the full pull action. So I'm not even sure if it's any different. So it has a right mouse button and it has a right mouse button. So the idea they had is that basically on a, they showed at least in the demos is that in a soft pull, you kind of aim and then if you pull it completely, it will shoot. I can tell you for a fact that doesn't work. <laughs> I tried it, that is just a terrible idea. <laughs> it's generally not very good, but I mean, you can use it for some very interesting things. Uh, like one of the uh, coolest parts here is the mode shifting. So the idea of mode shifting is that, uh, for example, here we have a mouse input and um, it, you know, it has this certain sensitivity, it has a trackball mode, it doesn't have any acceleration and here's the friction. Uh, and what I want is basically when I switch to the, uh, so it's still going to be mouse. So when I switch to the left trigger, so when I say left trigger soft pull, whenever I press the left trigger to go into the aiming mode, I want it to actually have uh, less sensitivity. So, and I want it to be a trackball, which has high friction. Yeah. So what that will make for me now is that, uh, you know, I see, okay, this is, I can really move my camera fast, but when I go into aiming, the camera will start moving way, way slower and will stop faster. So this is something that you can easily use for uh, like, you know, very precise aiming. And then you can even um, like do the sniping stuff. You know, if the, some games have a sniping on the different buttons, so you can actually do even slower movement for sniper rifle because you don't generally want to move a lot around, you know, because you only see the limited amount of space in front of you. So this is a very powerful thing, but um, again, it's a very Valve style programming here. Um, what was it? It was here on the mouse. So the thing is that this um, mode shifting doesn't really work on um, all things, yeah? So, it's like here I can pick the shifters as left trigger, right trigger, bumpers, grips, and pad clicks. Um, but I, I don't remember where was it. Let me think for a second. Ah, yeah. So gyro, we haven't talked about gyro yet. So you can map it again to all the same things, uh, which works actually surprisingly well with the mouse. And um, we actually want it none, and then we want to map it with the mode shifting. So here's the cool part. You can... Um, Wait, wasn't it gyro, I think? Right grip, left grip, okay. So yeah, basically the idea is that you can map it to the uh, mouse here and it works surprisingly well. So, um, wait, there's no gyro. Yeah, there you go. So they have this gyro enable thing, um, which basically is a right pad touch, yeah? so. It will only enable if I touch the right pad and I pulled the left trigger. And this thing is only available here. So those touches I think would be immensely useful for quite a lot of things, but you can, for some reason, this is the only, like literally the only place where you can use the touches. I don't know why. And I let me demonstrate you how the gyro actually works. So if I aim and now I press the uh, right, oh, sorry, and I press the right button. So as you can see, so right now I am controlling this with uh, gyro. So I don't actually, um, I don't actually move uh, my finger, but I move my whole gamepad. And it actually, if you configure the sensitivity right, this allows for some crazy precise aiming. I was surprised how well it works. And you know, uh, again, sniping modes or whatever the um, uh, camera modes you can imagine, it works really well. And you know, I can, I can be very quick, very precise, and my hand movements are very limited. So I don't really move it fa very fast right now. And I think this default sensitivity, you can even increase it even more. So you can do like micro movements that will go you through the half of screen, you know, which is pretty cool. And then again, if I re release my right uh, finger from the pad, it will stop. And again, if I do this, I can just, you know, use the pad to aim normally. 
and then I can use the gyro to adjust the movement so I can actually increase the speed like this. So this is very, very awesome. But again, as I said, you know, the strange thing is that the this touch pads triggers are only available on gyros. I don't know why. It would be so useful in some places. Okay, mode shifting, no, no, let's disable that. Okay. So that was the Metal Gear. Let's uh, let's try and look at the um, wait. Let me quick. Let's try and look at the some first-person action game, right? So this is because people was expecting this would work well, and well, I mean it kind of works well. So let's let's look at the first-person game. I will cut here and um, cut in when I start the game. All right, there we go. This is Far Cry Blood Dragon, and I think this is just the beginning of the game because I screwed up my last save game. But here's me playing with a Steam controller, and uh, the cool part is that I was able to skip all the Uplay bollocks without standing up from my couch because I could use my Steam controller as a mouse. So and you know just press whatever buttons do I, I need to press, and let's shoot this down. And you know as you can see, I'm not having too much trouble shooting down those guys um, with my um, emulated mouse. I mean the you know the trackpad is acting exactly as a mouse, I'm maybe not as precise as I would be, I mean obviously I'm not as precise as I would be with a mouse, but I'm still doing a decent job, you know, and um, okay, there are some guys here and there who are left alive, but we will fix that in a moment. Um, I played, I don't know, about one hour using this thingy um, and um, had a decent time, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, I would still, um, did I just, okay, let's, uh, let's skip the cutscenes. I wouldn't say I um, would prefer controller to playing. Um, oh god, no! We'll do the tutorial bit, right? Oh my god, no! <laughs> okay, I will skip that and then we'll continue our discussion. Okay, so there we go. Um, I finished the most annoying bits. Oh no, I didn't. Right, I thought I finished, but um, let's try that again. So there we go. Um, I mean, as you can see, you know, I can, um, I don't remember which one is F, this one is F, okay. I, again, this is, this is now a default, uh, am I stuck or something? Uh, no, okay, it's more, okay. I don't even Z, uh, what was the Z? I don't remember what was the Z, no, this is not the Z. Do I even have it mapped somewhere? No, this is jumping, um, this is a very good question, this is, let me just press it on keyboard, you know, okay, there we go. Okay, oh, oh, there we go, all right. So I'm. this is default preset, I haven't meddled with any configuration or anything. Uh, press T, I don't have T mapped, I'm pretty sure. This is a very Far Cry button, so let's throw it there and then we can murder this guy. There we go. Um, let's grab a gun and then we can uh, finally show you how exactly the first person shooting works. But as I said, you know, as a replacement for online shooters or say, some very high precision shooters that you know have very hard enemies or stuff like this i would not use the controller but uh it's something that i would use to play from a couch you know stuff like for example uh the uh, far cry 3 blood dragon or far cry 4 because you know it's not extremely difficult game and we have more tutorials yeah yeah, yeah whatever come on give me a gun already come on Yes, 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 go away. Yes, I'm tired of the tutorial, stop it. Annoying, exactly. No, that's not it, not yet, come on. There we go, all right. So, uh, this is default preset, again, I haven't, you know, meddled with the precision, and uh, as you can see, I am more or less fine with that um, and I missed him completely just when I was saying that I'm more or less okay and uh, I messed that up completely all right where's the second guy so as you, can, you know I, I'm doing a decent job so I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm bad at that and I think we should be able to kill that guy there we go and uh, we have a better gun here um, I think whoops that was grenade uh, that was grenade again. Nope. Um, I don't. I don't even know how to switch guns here. <laughs> Whatever. I can just shoot them with a pistol. That should work. You know, it's it's decent fun. Again, as um, something that 
it's definitely better than the 360 pad, so I can tell you that for sure. I am way more precise. Ah, there we go, a better gun, perfect. Uh, so I am way more precise than using the pad, because aiming with pad is, I mean, you know, it's. I don't know how people play from the consoles and first person shooters. You can play with auto aim, but uh, that's, you know, still not, not exactly very good. Um, do we have, okay, this is the melee and I don't, ah, this is reload. Okay, right. Good, but, um, you know, you, you can do a decent job here, so I wouldn't say you win any medals with it, but um, you can shoot people, you can kill people, and uh, you can aim pretty well, and there's a sniper, I don't want to be on his uh, front line. There we go, and uh, is there anyone else? Okay, we should destroy this thing. There we go, no more reinforcement, and now we should just kill everyone. Uh, let's go up, why not? So yeah, um, again, you know, if you're planning to use it for online multiplayer competitive or whatever, the hard shooters, don't even think about it, it just won't work. If you're planning to use it on a couch while playing some Far Cry or any other game that doesn't really require a lot of precision, or maybe doesn't, you get used to it really, and you know, you, I mean, you can get used to it and you can shoot pretty well. It's just I'm terrible at it and I haven't tweaked the precision because the default one never worked for me. And there we go. And again, uh, this, the, ah, uh, God, the uh, precision mode that I was showing, but basically when it will get more precise if you are aiming down sights, helps a lot. So I haven't configured this for the Far Cry. So yeah, you can definitely play it. It's way better than the controller, but still not cool, like not very close to mouse. I would say it's between the controller and the mouse. So still pretty good you know I, I play my some of the storyline fps like this now i'm thinking maybe i will play call of duty black ops 3 like this because it never was a hard campaign game uh but yeah uh so let's switch to a more interesting examples now uh, all right quit to desktop and yeah no that's the cool part i can navigate it all with the mouse so that's pretty awesome all right let's go back to the steam and I'll show you some games that are, um, and no, I don't want you to play stuff. Um, I will show you some games that are uh, not meant to be played with a um, controller uh, like at all. I mean, they some of them even do have this controller sort of mappings, but uh, they don't really uh, expect you to play it with a controller because it's mostly made for the keyboard. So for example, here we have, ah, no, 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 that won't work. This is another gripe. Uh, so basically if you have the user access control and um, if the game requires the admin mode to start, which sometimes happen, and your Steam is not in admin mode, the controller won't work. So controller switching won't work because there's no overlay in the game, which is a pain in the ass. Oh, man, I wish they would just do a system-wide driver. Okay, um, let's, let me think a bit and then I will come back to you. All right, let's, I mean, let's do City Skylines, why not? So, as you can see, it tells the controller configuration is required, and um, as I will demonstrate to you in a second, there is a whole bunch of presets available, and you can play this game pretty well from the couch. Um, so, let's head right into the controller configuration here. And as you can see, here's a, um, yeah, there we go. There's a community stuff, and if we look at the recommended, you can see there's official Skyline bindings. Um, even though they recommended, as already mentioned before, they are not very good. So I think the um, user bindings are way nicer. Um, so you can like, you have um, speed bindings and everything else. And is it the game frozen or is it the controller? I, ah, there we go. So there is another, I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's an intended thing. Uh, sometimes when you switch configs, the controller stops responding for like a couple of seconds. I mean, maybe that's related to the reprogramming. Maybe that's how the games handle it. Uh, but yeah, it's just a tiny um, annoying bit. Okay, where's, I think this one was a new one, which I, I did not want to load it, but whatever. Um, let's have a look at any, I mean, whatever. So the, um, I tried it with a, recommended setting from the developers and you know the basically camera movement was bound to the stick and then you can use the mouse to move the cursor around and then you could use the like uh triggers for zoom buttons and everything else yeah so there we go triggers are here working as the mouse 
So um, how do I zoom? Can I zoom? Okay, this is the areas. This is the audition. Uh, this is other stuff, and this is okay. Yeah, it works. yeah. So I mean, let's you know, let's. Um, can I zoom in somehow? Ah, there we go. Okay, so I can use bumpers to zoom in. Perfect. So we can, you know, they need more um, green zones. So let's pick some roads and let's build some roads here. As you can see, my city is not exactly large here, but this is the one that I built with uh, purely with Steam controller. And I broke my. Uh, electricity completely and as you can see here I can quite easily just zone it and now we want to want to pause the game here uh, please click this and then let's repair that stuff there we go and then connect it and off we go okay so yeah, as you can see you know I can uh, play it relatively well I don't really have any problems with like controlling it or uh, looking at things or clicking at things you know I can uh, do it in exactly the same way even if we talk about uh, more precise zoning so if we pick the selection tool I can easily do that and say okay I want a, a living room or living uh, zone here and maybe I want a bit more commercial no I don't because I have too many uh, anyway, okay, let's build some living here and you know, I mean it works pretty well. So um, This game is not exactly the one that requires you to be like super fast or, or anything, you know, so it works even better with uh, With controller um, Okay, we have an uncovered area here. So let's trade the pipe a bit and there we go. Yeah, so You know plays perfectly well. I do want to show you the uh, I guess as the last one, the Tree of Savior beta that I granted was granted access to, uh, does have a controller uh, support from uh, developers. But I found it that you know the um, the keyboard and mouse actually works way better because you have a quicker access to the UI. But to do that, I actually have to restart my Steam in um, uh, elevated mode in admin mode. So I'm gonna. Uh, exit it and then restart it and then come back to you with a uh, tree of server already running another Pain point again related to steam big picture is that the only way to turn off controller is actually to do it this way So you can turn it off by pressing and holding the steam button on it But it will launch the steam big picture <laughs> mode anyway, so it is slightly infuriating Valve, please, please, please make us a system-wide driver that can configure this controller outside of steam big picture mode we will be forever grateful all right let's do this all right there we go this is a tree of savior closed beta um which is um you know more like closed alpha i would say the game is very raw so if you see any bugs glitches or whatever or the terrible fps in a sprite based game bear in mind this is a very early version of it so it's um there's a lot of things to fix uh, this is my sportsman and uh, I basically uh, use the keyboard custom keyboard mapping for all the buttons uh, so as you can see you can play this as I already said you can play this game using the controller and uh, the way it works is that it allows you to bind things on the four buttons so A, X, B and Y and then you will use the triggers and bumpers to switch between various states and uh, while this kind of works, you still don't have enough of the buttons to cover all this and then all of those panels. So this is a bit of a pain in the ass. The way I did it is basically I bound the most useful skills to my buttons and uh, D-pad and my triggers. So, you know, I can do target lock, I can sit and stand, I can, um, I don't know, sprint or whatever. And uh, I still can use all my skills. And if I if I need to, I can just you know use my right pad and then uh, click to see you know to distribute my stats, check my achievements, check my character, um, change my inventory, and I you know I can drag stuff. Actually, I don't need to use the terrible controller UI, which is almost never good. So I you know if I want to unequip something, I just drag it off, and that okay that doesn't work. Come on, come on game. There we go. Okay, sometimes it does. So, you know, instead of using the terrible controller you have when you have to like press up and down 200 times to get to the position you need, I can just use mouse and it works pretty well. And I've been playing this game 
using purely the Steam controller for the past, I don't even know, does it tell us how much time did I spend here? I mean, I'm in top 10% judging by this one. So I'm doing relatively well. And um, I mean, I've been having fun, you know, I can, I can do pretty much everything aside from uh, typing in chat. I guess this is, again, one of the requests uh, for Valve open keyboard ah yeah you can okay so you can actually somehow open the keyboard but i am not sure how you do this with the quick buttons so maybe i i still have things to learn about it there's way too much stuff so yeah this is you know uh this is like one of the great examples when the steam controller works better than anything that actually developer um expected to work for this game so uh i guess you know maybe the game itself is a bit at fault because the wasd controls uh, or rather it's not WSD, it's the arrow keys here, so you can't really use the mouse to move, you actually have to use arrow keys, so mouse is just supplementary. But with the Steam controller it just works perfectly fine, and uh, you know, my pet running around with me, so it works pretty well. Uh, yeah, I guess we can uh, exit to Steam now and uh, wrap it up here. Okay, so... This was my opinion about Steam Controller. Um, just to sum it up, what, like, is it worth buying it? In my opinion, yes, absolutely. I've been having a blast with it in, in some games and you know, while some other games have problems with it and while Valve doing well thing, well writing not very good software that is not working well outside of the big picture, I'm really hoping they will extend it and I'm really hoping they will actually allow it to work without the big picture thing and allow me to turn off my controller without going here. Um, it's a really great piece of hardware and you know it feels good. Maybe there was like people complaining that the triggers are not, you know, the analog triggers are not like too large. Yeah true the, uh, the depth of triggers is not that big but um, I guess you know if you're playing racing game for example in one depth you're better off buying uh, like a proper wheel and uh, for shooters and everything that works pretty well and those two stage triggers are pretty cool the grips are really awesome the touch pads are surprisingly functional um, uh, so basically the two major problems with it is this the mandatory big picture mode which can be annoying and then the games that are don't play really well with uh, both both inputs so keyboard and mouse and gamepad together like Witcher 3 for example which I have never expected it to be okay uh, so thank you for watching and as always see you during next update bye